Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Now, when I mention the words cybersecurity and asset management, I think most people listening will know all about the critical role that it plays and how many of us are possibly guilty of taking it for granted but also how it is an incredibly cliched industry. For example, a Google search about cybersecurity will reveal matrix code and maybe even hacker wearing hoodie, along with stock phrases that every company seems to use in cybersecurity. So if you are a startup founder, in particular a, a cybersecurity founder, and you want to stand out in an industry and want to be known as the most innovative startup at the RSA conference, Where would you begin? Please trust me when I say that today's episode is crucial for a cybersecurity founder and indeed anybody interested in the industry. But today's episode is also washed down with some fantastic stories behind it and stories that I'll personally remember for a long time after today's episode is released. And the company is Axonius and they're aiming to solve the least sexy problem in cybersecurity which is asset management. And by connecting to more than 100 security and management solutions, Axonius is able to give customers credible and a comprehensive asset inventory and uncover security coverage gaps. And ultimately, automatically validate and enforce security policies. Now, they were named the 2019 RSAC Innovation Sandbox Most Innovative Startup and SC Magazine's Rookie Security Company of the Year. But all those awards only tell half the story. So buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to Cape Cod so we can speak with Nathan Burke from Axonius, who's going to share his story in a conversation that I genuinely enjoyed. And I hope you do too. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Sure. Uh, my name is Nathan Burke, and I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at Exonius, and we're a cybersecurity startup doing what we call cybersecurity asset management. Uh, this is my third cybersecurity startup, my fifth startup overall. I really enjoy joining at the very early stage um, where I can kind of define the brand and the message and then bring it to market. Uh, Two of the three cybersecurity startups I've been at uh, have been acquired. And aside from my day job, I really like advising other early stage startups. I generally do two at a time. I don't want to do more than that. Uh, I find that helping other startups that have nothing to do with cybersecurity really makes me step back and and be more creative. Um, And then aside from the work stuff, I live on Cape Cod with my wife and four-year-old daughter with a 13-year-old corgi named Steve and quite possibly the smartest German shepherd on the planet named Heidi, and she's a year and a half. (laughs) Fantastic. Now, on this Daily Tech podcast, I love exploring the stories behind startups and behind their success, but I read that yours is the most boring startup around, but (laughs) industry peers don't see it that way. So can you just set the scene and tell me about the kind of problems that you solve for your customers and what makes you unique from other solutions out there? Sure, sure. So... I don't know if it's boring, but we are definitely um, in what we call the the most unsexy part of cybersecurity. Um, and and let me tell you why. So like when you think of cybersecurity, and, and just in a, as an experiment on your own, if you want to, just search Google Images for the word cybersecurity, and so you're going to see like all these images that are reminiscent of the Matrix, right? Like sci-fi, high tech. And and when you think about it, like cybersecurity has all these like cutting edge technologies. Uh, you know, all the way from AI to machine learning and deception and automation. Um, And so it's filled with super cool tech. And then there's asset management, right? So no AI, no machine learning. We're talking about answering the most fundamental questions like, you know, how many devices do I have? Who has access to them? What's running on them? Where are they? Are they protected by the security solutions we've already bought? And these are really basic questions, but they're hard to answer. And so when you think about that, you know, it's 2019, why are these questions hard to answer? If you look at it kind of in context, the evolution is to me kind of fascinating because, you know, think back 20 years ago, you probably just had Windows desktops on a physical network. 
maybe running an antivirus on each and asset management was easy. And then a few big changes happened that made it really difficult, right? So then think about mobile devices. If you went back to that time and said, you know, my employees are going to be checking email while in line at Starbucks. They, they would call you crazy, but that's just the way things are, right? Yeah. And then you got things like the cloud. So everyone's moving more and more to the cloud, but do the solutions they have cover those cloud instances? And, and BYOD, right? So the IT and security teams just lost control over the devices that now access their systems and data. And then, you know, now you look at IoT and everyone's refrigerators talking to the internet, but just everything is, right? So in a world where everything is connected to everything else, it's just hard to answer that really kind of basic question of like, what what do I have? What am I responsible for securing? And are those things secure? So, so really that's like kind of the evolution of the problem. And it's one of those things where the problem has only gotten worse. And um, when I think our industry is really very innovative, but it's innovative on, on things that aren't going back to those basic questions. And, and that's how the problem has gotten worse. And that's why kind of we decided to focus on that problem. And you guys are deservedly known as one of the hottest in cybersecurity, having been named the most innovative startup at the recent RSA conference and SC Magazine's Rookie Security Company of the Year. But can you tell me about more about where it all began and the inspiration behind behind what you started here? Sure. So, you know, the genesis behind Exonius was when our, our CEO and co-founder, uh, Dean Sisman, was at his last startup. Um, he was working with one of the largest retailers on the planet. And he was trying to figure out how to deploy their product and, and asked the security team there, you know, what do you have that can um, allow me to deploy that this product? And and the, they had like hundreds of solutions. And he said, well, wait a second, uh, do you know, you know how many devices you have? And they're like, no, nobody does. And so he figured out that you know, they had these hundreds of solutions, but no way to know what was actually running, where there were gaps, um, and how a security team can answer these really basic questions. So he just realized how big of a problem this was, and then kind of looking to the future, saw how it's only getting worse with, with just kind of this explosion in the number and the types of devices. And so he then decided to to start Exonius to really help security teams stop wasting time figuring out all these um, answers to really basic questions. So they can focus on things like the deception and machine learning and, and all of those kind of high tech things that we want our, you know, our, our security teams that are already resource constrained, constrained and like overworked. We want them working on things that are are really valuable um, and not wasting time saying, you know, how many desktops do I have that are vulnerable to, you know, the next uh, virus that comes out. So that's why he started the company. Um, and, and it was kind of a rocket ship from there. It was, um, just July of 2017. They started the company, uh, immediately got uh, speed funding after that. And, um, I joined in November of 2017. We had our first product in March of 2018 and, and now, you know, we're, uh, we're kind of taking off. And I'm glad you mentioned the seed funding there because I think you went on to close a 13 million seed round for what, what a lot of people called the Toyota Camry of cybersecurity. So it's clear you guys have got a sense of humor in cybersecurity as well. But I mean, can you tell me more about the cybersecurity asset management and how it fixes that problem that actually nobody's paying attention to right now? Yeah, so we we closed our A round. Uh, it was a $13 million A round in February of this year. So it was right before the RSA conference. And, you know, I, just talking about this, the Toyota Camry thing for a second, and then I'll get to the other part, which, which is... You know, cybersecurity is just so saturated with companies that, you know, really say they all solve the same problems. So you have to find a way to, to stand out. I believe there were at RSA, I think there were 626 vendors there. Um, and that's, you know, only the people that were exhibiting at one show. And it's some multiple of that of how many companies there are out there. Uh, I did the math. I wish I had it on hand. But it was something like if you decided that you wanted to visit every single vendor at the RSA conference and spend two minutes at each. Um, forgetting about how long it takes to walk from one to the other um, and, and any of that sort of thing, it would be physically impossible to do so because there aren't enough hours in the show to be able to do that. That's just how many there are at one show, right? And so so you've got to find a way to stand out. And um, we kind of came up with this idea, you know, whereas the hot technologies like AI and machine learning get all the hype and attention, kind of like a Ferrari or Lamborghini, right? Asset management is like much more fundamental and basic kind of like a Toyota Camry and, and the Ferraris might be sexier, but the Camry is the most sold car in the U S because it really fits the most fundamental of requirements of what you need it to do. And so 
To us, that's asset management. Before you could even take advantage of the sexier technologies, you have to solve the basics first. And and that seems to really resonate with people. And I think you found a different way of standing out at the RSA conference as well, which we do need to talk about, of course, because you're off the back of a huge win. Well, I don't want to reveal too much or any spoilers around this, but you have a great story about the RSA sandbox. So can you maybe tell me a little bit more about exactly what it is, why it's a big deal, and this amazing story behind it? Sure, sure. Happy to. I love telling the story. I'll, you know, I, I can imagine myself on a porch in a rocking chair when I'm 90 <laughs> telling the story. So I'm always happy to tell this. So the RSA Innovation Sandbox is it's a competition during the RSA conference. The RSA conference is the biggest cybersecurity conference uh, in the world. There's like 60,000 people there. Um, and so there is a competition each year for the most innovative startup of the year. And I'd say I think it's around 100 startups submit, of which uh, 10 are selected as the finalists. Um, and the 10 finalists have to go on stage in a room full of 3,500 people and some multiple of that uh, streaming live, give their best three-minute pitch on why they're the most innovative startup. Um, and then two are picked as the, the final and one is chosen the winner. And I think the stat is in the last 10 years, the ten, the startups that have been finalists have raised over five billion dollars, um, and something like forty percent or fifty percent have been acquired, and that's just in the last ten years. So it's a pretty good indicator of a company that's going to be successful. And so uh, this was my third time trying to get in uh, at, at three different companies, and so you know we lucked out um, and uh, were chosen as one of the top ten finalists. And so. The minute we get that email, it's all right, we've got to put together the best three minute pitch of our lives. And so, you know, I went down to New York. I'm spending a bunch of time with our CEO just going over this pitch. You have 10 slides, three minutes, and you have to cover all these things. And then you're judged by this, you know, distinguished panel of judges. So we spend all the time on it and we're ready to go. I fly out a day early to San Francisco and uh, just because I have to get everything all set up. I get a, uh, a text message and then a call from our CEO his flight was canceled. There's a huge storm on the East coast. <laughs> yeah. And so we have to figure out, well, what are we going to do? And, uh, he is able to get rebooked the next morning, uh, with a layover in Chicago, I think it was. And, uh, there was just no way he would be there in time for the rehearsals or the judges demos. And so, uh, we just, we had to make a call and he said, you got to do it. And I said, okay. Um, and so, you know, our, our CEO is one of these guys that can just uh, just show up in a room and just do it, just kind of wing it and and do great. I am not that guy. <laughs> um, so between uh, midnight that night before and the time to uh, get on stage for rehearsal, I probably rehearsed a hundred times, no joke. Yeah. Um, and so I got there for the rehearsal and bombed. I mean, it was terrible. Uh, but I just said to myself, all right, I'm not going to get any worse than that. Um, so... The first person that went on stage was uh, he was a person that had a cybersecurity position within the Obama administration. Wow. And as he's going, I'm like kind of scanning for the exits because <laughs> I am not this polished. And this guy was like, wow, like diplomat level uh, speaker. And so, you know, it finally gets time for me to go up. I, I do my thing and it went OK, um, felt OK about it. And then uh about an hour later, um, the, the, all the judges come back and, and they uh, they call us back to announce the, the two finalists of the finalists, right? And uh, and so the MC of the event uh, says a word that, I mean, in retrospect, it sounded kind of like Exonius, but not enough for me to know that he was calling me up. And so he called the name and I'm just looking around saying, I mean, I'm good, good for that guy. Uh, and then everyone's looking at me saying, going on stage. So if you actually see the video, it's pretty funny. I walk up on stage and I say to the guy, I thought you were calling somebody else. Uh, it's Exonius. And he, he said, oh, go sit down. I'll, I'll do it again. So I, I walk back off stage, sit down for them to announce it again. And so uh, so that was, that was pretty funny. And then um, at the end, it was uh, us versus a company doing homomorphic encryption, which is like you know, as technical and sci-fi as you can get. And so I'm thinking, yeah, second place is not bad. Mm. Uh, but then they called us as winners, and uh, I was pretty shocked at that. So it's just one of those great stories where, you know, you plan everything out, but nothing goes as planned, and you just got to be able to improvise and um, 
and uh, we were just you know so excited that we won that and uh, it's been pretty amazing since wow what a great story and it, it kind of feels that sometimes in life especially that things kind of happen for a reason don't they it's almost <laughs> like it was your destiny to go up there i know confront your fears overcome you know a horrendous situation up against strong competition and prove that you can do it so are you going to be up on stage more and more now <laughs> probably will yeah. yeah i'll probably be a victim of, of that success and that's fine with me because it was a lot of fun and i i love doing stuff like that so um yeah that was just pretty amazing and i'll never forget that story and i'll i'll, I'll probably be uh, bothering people sitting next to me on the plane for the next 20 years telling that story but uh it was a lot of fun. Well, you are an award-winning speaker now, so you want to get that next That's to your true. name as well. i got to go edit my LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> now, for uh, the CISOs that currently have no idea how many assets are on their networks, and is there any way you can offer a few examples of how your simple approach that you've got there is making a difference to your customers out there? Yeah, absolutely. So the problem being that you've got all these devices and, and you just have no way of, of knowing what's there. And so... The way that we look at at the problem is a little bit unique, and I think that's that's kind of our approach is what's unique in that all these companies have all of these solutions already. And I, I remember at my last company, I was working with a customer that had at any given time ninety different cybersecurity solutions. Yeah. And all of these solutions know about assets, right? So you've got for mobile devices, you have mobile de- device management, and for endpoint protection, you've got another tool. And for scanning for vulnerabilities, you have another tool. So you, it's not a question of not having the information. It's a question of how do I get that information in a way that I can ask a question? And so a couple of basic questions that we hear all the time. So I'm moving more and more to the cloud, but um, you know, I'm spinning up instances where my uh, vulnerability scanner just doesn't know about these new instances. So like, how do I solve that? And so our whole idea is really simple. Um, we just connect to all of the different solutions that our customers use. And, and right now, I think we're at 126 of them. So we build all these integrations, and we just collect all the information that they have about assets. We correlate it together, and then we can show you exactly three things. So the first thing is we give you this kind of complete asset inventory. Every you know every laptop, desktop, server, uh, cloud instance, IoT device, whatever, We'll show you everything you have. Then we can, if we are able to do that, we're able to show you uh, exactly where there's gaps in um, security coverage. And finally, if we can do that, we can then say, because we connected to all these solutions, we can use them to take action. So uh, we can connect to something that tells us about an asset, but we can also say, hey, you know what? You need to block that device because it, it something's wrong with it, or you need to deploy software because it's running something that's um, outdated. So those are the exact three things that we do. Um, and I think the, the really interesting part, and that's what's different about us, is that approach of, you know, we don't want to say, you've got to install another agent on all your devices. You've already got those things. Like, we just want to take advantage of what you're already using, get that information, correlate it together, and then allow you to ask questions, um, get answers, and then take action. So really, really super simple. And, you know, I think I'm sure every company out there says, Deployment is easy. You can do it right away. But like, this is the land speed record that I've ever seen. We went from like the first conversation with someone to them saying, "Okay, I get it. Let's 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 deploy this on the same call in under an hour." So it's it's something that we're, like everyone can say we can do it quickly. I've seen it done in under an hour. So um, it's something that can just be done very very fast, and and our customers kind of love that. And we've seen that in terms of like how long it takes from first conversation to to being able to have a customer signed and sold in just like a couple of weeks wow i'm curious yeah. have you ever uncovered a, a bitcoining mining machine <laughs> hidden under a floorboard somewhere or anything like that on a company network i'll tell you my favorite one my favorite one is um, a company that some employee had uh, found this smart plug so basically it's like a, a power plug that is controlled by their iphone yeah. that was connected in their data center and so we found this on the first call with, with the um, chief information security officer. And he's like, this has to be a mistake. And we showed him exactly what it was. And it was in the day. So an employee at home, let's say that employee got fired, yeah. data center's out because he could just remote kill it. Wow. And so just during that call, he said, you're going to have to give me five minutes. And he went over and talked to the employee in, um, in, uh, in hushed tones. And uh we were able to, to resolve that. But, but that's the other thing is just we find things all the time. And it's, it's, it's not out of you know, stupidity or malice or anything else. It's just 
know, there are just so many devices, so many different things that, that we can just plug into our network um, that we just don't know about. Right. And, and it's, it's not something where it's an egregious mistake. It's just, that's kind of life. And, and, you know, when I, I some of my last companies, you know, when you're talking about security and, and being able to react, it's this whole idea of assumption of compromise instead of trying to protect against everything. And, and I think that's probably the right approach, which is, you know, things are going to happen, but you have to be able to find out when they do know anytime something doesn't fit your policy and then find a way to either automatically fix it or at least alert someone. And so that's the approach that we've taken. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of examples exactly like that. Um, and, and we see them every day. And so we're just trying to help solve those as soon as we can. Now, earlier in this interview, I did mention the boring mantra, but can you tell me more about why that label is actually helping you guys stand out in a big way in an industry rife with innovation by simply solving the actual problems of today and not tomorrow? Because I think we've all seen so many tech solutions out there that promise to solve things not now, but in five years from now and built on future promises, but you're doing it right now, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I think it was, uh, I'm gonna actually uh, read a quote from you here. So again, back to the RSA thing. So um, one of the judges was this guy, he he was formerly a, a CISO at a um, at a huge healthcare, or, healthcare organization, and uh, he put it the best, so I, I'm just gonna quote him. His name's Patrick Heim. Um, here's what he said, uh, let me find it. So. He said, I've had the distinct pleasure of being the CISO for an organization with over 200,000 individuals in it, a massive environment. And I've lived the pain of never having a straight answer around assets, never knowing how many servers there are, virtual machines, endpoints, what's covered uh, by what scope wise. And it's one of those fundamental problems in security that for some reason is really obvious. And many of us have lived the pain, but nobody solved it yet. And then he says, Exonia saw this obvious market opportunity and they solved it. And it's crazy important to solve. And when we think about prioritizing security initiatives at CISO, um, the more I think about it, CISOs are looking at back at basics. What are the fundamentals we have to fix from an infrastructure pr perspective first before we worry about ninjas facing us with APTs and zero days? And there are some basic things you have to solve first. And, and you know, we talked about the Toyota Camry of, of cybersecurity and you know, uh, we've we've also talked about how this is the the kind of least sexy part of cybersecurity, and and we see articles all the time referencing you know the unsexy tool or uh, you know Toyota Camry of cybersecurity wins uh, most innovative company, and I, and I think that's right because I think we're at a point where uh, the chief information security officer uh, and the rest of their team are just you know hit so often and so frequently with messages about these really high fi you know high tech, scientific, like sci-fi sort of uh, solutions that just something that says, here's all we do, it's just three things, um, and we can show it to you right away. Um, I, I think that clarity and that simplicity is something that's resonating. And, um, you know, we're in, in a position where if it's something that you're not interested in solving, okay, do something else. Um, but I would rather be really clear and concise about what we do and uh, be the kind of boring and unsexy as long as we're able to really solve those problems i'm okay with those labels and um, it, it's something that i think has been kind of refreshing fantastic but i've got to ask i mean you've been on this journey a few times now what are the biggest lessons that you've learned on your startup journey and what do you think if you've got any startup founders listening on their own startup journey or at various stages is there anything valuable that you could pass on to them uh, they'll have to judge if it's valuable but i certainly will give my thoughts um you know, to me as a, as, a, as a marketing guy, that's always the first marketing hire, um, usually very early and the earlier the better for me. Um, the way that I look at the world and how you bring something to market, I think there's really kind of three pieces. Um, the first thing is really understanding the problem. Um, I think it's really easy to fall in love with your technology and just talk about how this is the greatest thing in the world. And, you know, if everyone just had this, all their problems would be solved. Um, but that's just not the way to do it. And instead, I think a real focus and understanding of the problem is the first piece um, on which everything will kind of be built. So really trying to understand both how the problem is felt by the prospect, but also things like why hasn't this been solved yet? Uh, if someone came and you know had a magic wand and solved this problem, is it something that you'd be willing to uh, prioritize as, as number one right now, despite all the other things you've got going on and, and how acute is it and what's the value of it versus something else. And are you replacing anything? So like this really deep, deep understanding of the problem 
unless you have that, everything else will be shaky. And I think after that problem, you kind of move on to the approach. And so to me, that's my favorite part of building the story, which is I talk to a chief information security officer and I say, all right, let, let's just say that you agree that asset management is something you want to solve right now. Uh, then let's talk about an approach. I don't have a product to sell you yet. Let's just talk about this. Now, you've got all these different solutions. So if you could just connect to all of them, grab every piece of information you need, correlate it together, and then do it in a way where I can ask questions, get answers, and understand where there's gaps, and then you know take action. Would that be a valid approach? And if I can get their buy-in there, then I know I've got something. And, and, you know, then that translates to, okay, now how do I package that all together as a story that, that shows this is the problem. It is worth solving. It's getting worse or getting different or whatever. Here is an approach. If, if this approach is valid, then take a look at, at our product, either when we have it or right now. And, and you can take it from there. Because I think if you, if you skip any of those steps, it's not going to work. And I think by skipping those steps and not having that really deep and kind of fundamental understanding of the problem and the approach, just getting to the product is never going to work. So uh, that, I think that's my advice to anyone that's that's starting out today. It's the advice I give to the startups that I advise. Um, it might be a little bit basic, but I think it's it's something you really have to do if you're going to do this well. And then the final thing is you got to stand out. Um, you know, it's cheesy to talk about the Toyota Camry of cybersecurity. I know it is. And, and, you know, I, I've had people come up and say, oh, Exonius, you're the unsexy Toyota Camry guys. And I'm totally fine with that. Um, <laughs> but that's the thing is you just have to imagine, you know, I, I think about this all, all the time. If I was a chief information security officer, I wouldn't even have a phone in my office because everyone is trying to get at me and everyone is saying, you know, I prevent, then I detect and I respond and, and, you know, if you're preventing, what are you detecting and why are you responding? But anyway, this is the message that they keep hearing. Like, we will stop everything, but if we don't, we will fix it. And um, it's just everything sounds the same. And I think being able to have that kind of concise and clear message that someone could repeat, that's just you, you have to do it in a crowded market. Um, and I think that's true for, you know, almost any startup. And of course, if we do have someone thinking of pitching for RSA Sandbox next year, are there any tips that you could pass on to them, especially because you're a winner now, other than get your CEO to fly in two days before, of course. <laughs> Is there anything else you could recommend? Actually, yeah. Um, so I um, I did a, a webinar, uh, this this outfit, this uh, uh, group of cybersecurity marketers uh, in Israel asked me to do a, a, a webinar with them about exactly that. And you can find it on Bright Talk. Cool. So if you just search um, RSA Innovation Sandbox or I, probably just my name, if you just search Nathan Burke on Bright Talk, you'll find that entire webinar. So I did 30 minutes on exactly that from, you know, building the um, the submission to figuring out what is that arc of the story in three minutes um, to coming up with the, the kind of, um, you know, the hook around the Toyota Camry thing and, and that sort of thing. So I went through all of that. Uh, and it's a recorded webinar, so you can check that out. And, um, uh, you know, I go through the entire process from beginning to end. Cool. Well, I'll have a link to that with the show notes and the blog post that accompany yes. this podcast, just so people listening can find that nice and easily. But looking to the future then, I mean, what's next for Axonius? Is there anything else that you can share with us today? Yeah, I mean, you know, we we only really started, um, you know, selling to customers um, late last year, and it's just been taking off. I mean, we went from zero to a sales team of five right now, and that'll increase pretty quickly. So really, it's adding customers and at the same time, building out more and more features. At the beginning, we were really focused on the visibility part and showing you when things were wrong. And, and we had information security officers say, so great, you're showing me where things are wrong. How do I automatically fix it? Because otherwise you're creating more work for me. And so really that's, that's the kind of evolution of the, of the product is um, I think there's two things. One is building more and more adapters and that's those connections to all the different solutions. We've gone from zero to 126 in a year. So that's pretty fast. And then the second is just as, as many actions as we can create to automate some of that resolution. Um, we'll, we'll do more and more of that, but then um, we're doing a lot with partners as well. Um, so, uh, you know, I've got some of the bigger companies out there like the um, Palo Alto Networks and Blue Cat, and uh, th there's a number of them. Because we integrate with them, they want to do partnerships with us. And so we're doing a lot on the marketing side with them as well. Uh, so I think the answer is just about everything and a lot of it. Um, and so we're just continuing to grow and um, really trying to take advantage of the opportunity we have right now. 
So if anyone listening that wants to find out more information about everything that you do or just keep in touch and find out or even maybe reach out and ask a question if you're, yeah. uh, if anyone's available, what's the best way of doing that? So I think the, the best is probably LinkedIn. Um, so all my social pro- profiles are just Nathan W. Burke. So the same thing on Twitter. I will warn you that I'm terrible on Twitter. So, uh, you know, I barely update anything there. So I think LinkedIn is probably the best way to get at me. Um, or if you want to just want to reach out via email, it's just Nathan at Exonius.com. And Exonius is A-X-O-N-I-U-S. So, um, yeah, always happy to talk about the stuff. You can probably tell that I can do this for uh, for hours and talk about the, all of the stories. And and this is a lot of fun for me. I love what I do. And I'm always happy to give any advice I can or, or help connect people. So um, I think LinkedIn is probably the best. And I'd be happy to talk to anybody about this stuff. Well, I cannot thank you enough for coming on and sharing your story with me today. And I've got to say, after, I think, 860 interviews, this, a lot of the stories that you've told are going to stay with me for a long time <laughs> and stand out. So you are great at what you're doing there. But more than anything, just to thank you for coming on and joining me today. Cheers. Well, I really appreciate the opportunity. This was a lot of fun, and uh, thanks for having me. Axonius is the only cybersecurity asset management platform that provides organizations with that complete visibility and automated policy validation on all assets, devices, and users. By seamlessly integrating with over 100 existing management and security technologies, And by doing that, the Exonius platform is deployed in minutes to enable organizations to embrace innovation and accelerate speed to value. But what I will remember years from now was Nathan's personal story of being thrown in at the deep end in a highly prestigious RSA sandbox contest and being surrounded by speakers of an incredibly high standard and that feeling of being just a little bit out of your depth and then going on to win the title of the most innovative startup by RSA. I mean, wow. I mean, as someone that hates public speaking, and because as for me personally, I'm much more of a one-on-one guy rather than stood in front of 3,500 people. And because of that, I completely understand what an amazing accomplishment this is. And having gotten to know Nathan a little bit, I know 100% just how much he and Axonius deserve that win so i'm going to be following their progress very carefully over the next few months and years but i'm curious for everybody listening all over the world do you have any similar experiences that you could maybe share with me and everybody listening or do you simply have any opinions or questions around today's conversation well, I'm the easiest guy to get hold of in the world. You can email me techblogwriter at outlook.com, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, wherever you hang out. Just look for Neil C. Hughes. You'll find me nice and easily there. And of course, there's my website, techblogwriter.co.uk, where you can find all the links that we mentioned in today's podcast, uh, pictures of today's guest, and of course, every guest that we've interviewed. And there is over 860 of them now, so you can uh, trawl through the back catalogues. And again, a big thank you to each and every one of you that sent best wishes my way after my little episode on my plane ride home from the US. But rest assured, I'm okay and feeling pretty good and getting back to bombarding your podcast feeds with with a lot more episodes to make up for the few days that I missed last week. And I mean it when I say this, I'm genuinely grateful that you enable me to join you as the soundtrack to your day, wherever it is that you're heading. So just a big warm thank you from me for listening to this Daily Tech Podcast. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.